In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, from God, Amen. First, I would like to wish you uh, a good uh, Holy Week. And we are half away, half away today. So we're almost done. Huh? Those days, they go fast. Uh, and the church has a very condensed uh, uh, program of reading and frustration and uh, praising uh, that make us may have the uh, fervent energy energy to have in our hearts for those days and for the rest of the year. Uh, so good wishes for you that you catch up with the church for the rest of the week. Uh, until you, we get the glorious uh, uh, Resurrection feast. Uh, the church, the, the the church perspective of this week is trying to go with the Lord step by step, since he had a very steady step to the cross. He had declared to the disciples who are going to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be betrayed. So it wasn't a chance, but he was preparing everything according to the prophecies. So he was coming to fulfill the prophecies and to the cross. There is no joke about this. There is no um, uh, going away or uh, human feelings in this way. But the Lord was coming to be crucified. He entered Jerusalem to be crucified. He came and he was trying to fulfill the economy of salvation, uh, taking very steady steps to for, to, the, to be crucified, to save the world. And the church also, the aim of the past seven, eight weeks, uh, the Lent, was to repent, to come back to God, to be with Him, to feel Him, to be close to Him. And now we are with Him step by step to the cross and the more we feel the suffering, the more we feel the joy and glory of the resurrection. The more we suffer, the more we get, and this is the rule. Uh, so, uh, and the Lord came to Jerusalem on Saturday evening, and for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, he had a very nice journey from Bethany, from Lazarus, uh, house, uh, it's around three kilometers to Jerusalem, so he used to go in the morning, come back at night, spend the night, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, on Monday morning, so of course Saturday was a great entry, uh, sun, Monday he passed by the fig tree and he didn't find fruit, so he cursed it. Tuesday, when he was going, they told him, look at the tree, it's withered. And say, have faith, have faith. Not have faith to wither the trees, but have faith not to be withered. Have faith that you restore yourself when you fail and when you uh, get away. Have faith to return back so you restore yourself. Uh, on Tuesday was the last day that the Lord showed on the uh, synagogue or the uh, temple and uh, it was the last day and he was asked too many questions and we call this day the day of education, learning, teaching teaching and the Lord taught about primarily one subject although he spoke about it in two different ways the subject was the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven is at hand so he tried to speak in parables. He spoke about the very famous parable of the ten virgins, the uh, wicked vineyards, uh, also uh, the, the wedding and the invitees. Five, uh, uh, five uh, parables, he spoke about it. And on the other side, the disciples came and told him, give us, tell us 
what's the signs of the end of the world, and he spoke about the eschatologic facts about the world, and they are all the same. He was uh, encouraging people for the kingdom of heaven, and he was giving the signs of the kingdom of heaven, and it goes with this also, he was, was last confrontation with the Pharisees, and he gave them the really woe to you Pharisees, you to, uh, the, the woes. He told them everything because th that was the last time that there is a conversation. So he was talking about, talking about the kingdom of heaven. Uh, I would like today to uh, not to, to speak to you about uh, the, type, the 10 versions, but I will speak from a uh, tradition perspective. Uh, what they used to do on the weddings? How they got married in that uh, society? So, and you'll find out that the Lord was trying to give the idea of the kingdom of heaven from the idea of a uh, wedding. Because he is our, we are all engaged to him. He is our bride. And we are, he is our groom and we are the bride. So we are waiting for him to come and take us. And how this used to be worked in the old society. So if there is a young man wanted to get married, he maybe sees a young woman uh, trying to fill her jar with water or walking in the street and say, I'll marry this lady. So he goes to his father and say, I would like to get married to this lady. Okay. They will take the diary or a gift to the family. So the family of the groom will go to the family of the bride and with a gift. The gift could be gold, silver, copper, cows, camels, anything. And uh, the lady, if she likes the gift, that's an expression that she likes, the man. If she accepts the gift, she became his fiancé. Okay? And then the, he will make a very important speech, uh, speech with her. Talk to her. Okay? You accept me, we will live together, we'll have a family together. I'll go to my father and build uh, a house. Do you like a house by yourself? Do you like uh, a room in my father's house? Do you like to go to another town and leave, leave this town to your parents? And at this time, I think the, the bride, she doesn't have an idea. All she wants to tell him. I would like to live with you, that's all. Uh, they don't have any, uh, they don't have a lot of requests at that time. But later on, they have their own. So he will tell her, I'll go fix uh, a place to live, and then I'll come and take you. At this time, she will start preparing herself, uh, going to the tailor, buying some clothes, and her father will bring her a big box. And she will start putting her clothes her clothes, her, uh, uh, she started making quilt and uh, uh, sheets and stuff like this in her box and she will start preparing herself for the day that the, the bride is coming to take her to their home. Of course the architect, uh, the, how they built their homes, the homes were some kind of square. Uh, they uh, have a uh, fence of, uh, of uh, blocks or so, and they build rooms around it. And in the middle it is open. So they, uh, they have the front is open as a court, and they go to the rooms. The parents have the room, the kids have rooms, the animals have room, the kitchen, all those. And maybe they have a well in the middle, or a tromba, uh, They have a water place in the middle, water found. Okay, so this is the house. Uh, it, it's cheaper to build uh, a room in the house, or if they are rich, they go and build uh, another house, or they, if they like adventures, they go to another town. Anyhow, and the bride will send messages to the, the groom, will send a, a message to the bride. 
al I'm late. It takes it's taking me longer time to fix our uh, place. Uh, I'm coming in a month. I'm coming in a week. The time is there, and she will uh, uh, figure out which day. Normally, Jewish they will marry on which day? Huh? The Sabbath. They can't marry on the Sabbath. So they married the day before, oh, okay? So they married on Friday. So she said, he's coming this week, so must be on the, the, the uh, beginning of the Sabbath or before. And he sent his, all his friends with gifts before him to the bride. The groom is coming, the groom is coming. And some of his friends, they come with uh, a team singing and, uh, and saying songs and dancing on the street and they know they are outside. So they come and meet each other. They eat, they marry, they, uh, uh, they sing, they, uh, uh, for a day, two, three, it depends how rich they are and they can host people. If they are rich, they can do this for a month. Uh, if they are okay for a week, if they're poor, a day is enough. Let them make them food and leave, okay? So this is how they used to do. And the Lord said out of this custom, and he said this, I'm going to come and take you. You are my bride, and the bride is waiting for Christ to come. Five foolish and five wise. The wise waited for him eagerly, and the foolish, they didn't have the talent to wait for him. So Christ was trying to, I am coming. I am coming, I'm coming to take you with me. I am, you should be waiting. And the eager soul is waiting, the eager souls are waiting for Christ to come and take, take them with him. Because he went to prepare a place. I can't say more than this on this. Okay, Christ prepared a place for us in heaven. He came and taught and urged and helped people how to live for him. And now it is time to be with him. So the idea of the kingdom, what's the kingdom? The kingdom of, uh, of, of God is at hand. He, he said the, the kingdom is in with you. The kingdom is a state. If I know God, I'm living in the kingdom. If I know God, I'm living in the kingdom. We say, what is heaven? What's in heaven? Some people, they say, whatever we don't see on earth, we'll see in heaven. Whatever I can get my hand on, I'll have it in heaven. If I marry one here, I marry Sharif Ka. If I don't, uh, uh, if there is no water, there will be uh, rivers of milk, or the rivers of honey. We don't say it. This is all uh, Jewish and Muslim. At, uh, uh, imagination but we say the kingdom of heaven where God is his kingdom is if God is there we are well satisfied he won't there is no food there is no drink we're not looking for this but we're looking for to see God all our lives we want to see him we seek him so the first thing of the kingdom is where he is, his kingdom is. So when you pray, you feel the presence of the kingdom. When you read about Christ, when you are with your Bible, that's where Christ is. With his word, with his energy, his momentum. Whether you are in your home, or riding your car, or riding the bus, or in the train, or the plane, where God is, this is his kingdom. That's why they used to say about Christians, 
is a khinnifawi. Is khinnifawi. What khinnifawi means? From heaven. Khinnifi owi. Khinnifi owi means in heaven. So when someone is thinking about God, he doesn't care about what's happening around him. He sees always the end, the end result, where God is, is the best that could happen. So the first thing about the kingdom of heaven, it is a state, a manner of feeling. The second thing, the kingdom of heaven, when we stand in your holy sanctuary, we are standing in heaven. So every time we come to church, we visit him. And this is the, the imaginary thing that about heaven. You see saints, but those, all those will be present physically in heaven. So we will sit among saints and God is in his throne. This is the setup of heaven. I keep imagining myself, how big is heaven? And how many people will be there? Huh? Myriads of myriads, thousands of thousands. Imagine we are living now. What is the population of Earth now? They said what? How many billions? Seven? Eight billions? Okay. Uh, of course, who is going to go to heaven? God wished that all go to heaven. But half of them, they are believers. Half of those, uh, little than half. Uh, for many generations, how many billions? I presume that all believers will go, but this is not true. Only, only the living believers will go. Because some believers will be eliminated, I'm sure. So how many billions? So imagine you're sitting about tens of billions and feeling that God is yours. And the church gave us this image when we come to church. God is present. God is present. And finally, the meaning of the kingdom. Uh, the kingdom of God has time. When is the time? After the second coming of Christ. After the judgment. Where? We don't know. St. John said, there is a new earth a new heaven. We don't know where it is. But there is a place. Is it on earth? In heaven? We don't know. It's new. It's someplace new. God is going to take the, his brides, his people, the people who believed in him, the people who trusted him, the people who follow his path, he is going to take them and they will be in, him in, in heaven. What they are going to do in heaven, what we do in the church precisely. What, what we do in the church? Pray, praise, maybe read, because the Bible will be living. Uh, and communion will be in the second. Uh, the Lord said that. I will drink it with you new in the kingdom of heaven. We don't know how it will be. There was no idea, even for the disciples, that Christ will give them communion on the, uh, on the last day they, uh, they met. But he brought bread and there was no bread. And he and I tell them, take, eat, this is my body. If you don't eat of this bread and drink, you have no life in you. So this is the source of living. We are living, our bodies will live even after we decay, we'll rise up again. This is the faith of the church. This is what we received from God. So now, let us be prepared. Let us be prepared for the kingdom of heaven. Let us be waiting for Christ, for his word, for his actions. If we are in trouble, let us have patience on Christ, that he will resolve things, that he will contact us from time to time. God sends messages through the Bible, and sometimes we ask him through prayers, and he sends messages through our readings, 
our listening. When we listen to the Word of God, our ears sanctified and our minds are blessed. That's why we said every time, if is maru'ut, if is maru'ut, yani blessed, huh? بسم رؤوت إن جابسني وخلنا برانا بشوي ستين مبارك الآتي باسم الرب قبل ما بفور كوميونيان and before the Bible the the priest starts the Bible if اسم رؤوت إن جابسني وخلنا بران كاتالوكن blessed is he who comes the words according to Saint Luke words according to Saint John blessed blessed are those who listen to the word of God and yet changed Blessed are those who come to Christ. Blessed are those who call Christ on their hearts and live the kingdom. They will never be afraid of death. They will never be afraid of trouble. They will never be afraid of a change. The, lie, the, the world is changing around us day and night. Uh, things are hard and harsh. And people think, oh, good old times was a lot better. Maybe it was cheaper. Huh? Maybe it was easier. Yes, maybe, but it is the same uh, function. Yeah, it was cheaper, but they didn't have money. Huh? Uh, they have a lot less money. They had a, a, a lot less of uh, things to do. But now, but now, God blessed us with many things that we may live the kingdom. And besides this, when the parents live the kingdom, the children feel the kingdom. When the church live the kingdom, the people feel the kingdom. How? When the church is focused on Christ and how to be saved, we will be saved. We will go in the same way. When the parents are focused in their lives, how to teach the, the, the boy, their boys and girls, how to pray, how to follow the way of God, they, they won't be in trouble. They will have strong faith. And this is what Christ said. Have faith. Have faith. Have, what is faith? Trust. Do you trust God when you have a problem? Do you trust that God will solve it? Or you will trust your friends and yourself and your thoughts? And we come back to the same, uh, the same uh, uh, basic things. How to trust God. Trust Him from all your hearts. And you will see wonders. May the Lord give us the feeling of the kingdom. How to live the kingdom. How to prepare ourselves and the people around us to the kingdom. Because we are all messengers of Christ. If we believe in Him will be the source of others to believe in him for him is all glory forever